Hey everybody, welcome to part 13 in our series on transferring data from Access to Excel. We're discussing transferring data from an Access database to an Excel spreadsheet and after it's in Excel, using VBA from our Access database to format graphs in the spreadsheet. Today I want to talk about colors. First I want to talk about filling areas of the graph with solid colors and then we'll move on to gradients after that. So let's head over to our form and start with, I don't have any look at what we're starting with. We have a graph here with two data series. Uh, today we're going to talk about putting colors in our plot area, which is inside this box here, and then also the chart area, which extends around the plot area, and actually also extends behind it. So let's close our spreadsheet, head over to the code window, and I'll start with the plot area. That is plot area, and do interior color. Put a light gray in there, and, have a, and also let's do the chart area at the same time. Chart area, interior, oops, interior color. Put a slightly different gray so we can see the difference between the two areas. Let's see, here's our graph. So you see here we have a, a darker gray in the plot area and a lighter gray around that in the chart area. Now I want to show you one more way of doing this. Let's show you one more way of doing this. You can use the plot area, format, fill, for color, RGB method. And we'll do 230, 230, 230 again. And instead of typing on that again, Copy that, change that to chart area, put our 240 there, there, there. Get rid of the previous version, save, and we've got the same thing. So both of those syntaxes work for filling the chart area with a solid color. Now let's get rid of the solid color. Let's talk about gradients. So let's start with a width for our Chart area, format, fill. Let's uh, get ourselves an image down below. I'm going to type in a four color RGB equals, and I give it a really obvious color so we can see the difference. Uh, obviously, when we're doing these gradients, that's going to be a solid green, right? Red, red there, green. Blue, so 255 is full green with nothing else mixed in. Okay, so we're going to start with one color gradient. This takes three parameters. The first parameter tells it what type of gradient we want. So, we don't want to do we want to fade from top to bottom or left to right or from the center out or diagonally. I'm going to choose MSO gradient horizontal. And um, remember these, these constants that start with MSO. In order to see those, you're going to need to go to references and make sure that your reference to Microsoft Office object library is chosen. Okay, um, our next parameter is a variant, and it takes a number between one and four. And what the one through four represents depends upon which type of gradient we've chosen. Okay, in our case, we've got a gradient horizontal, which means um, we're gonna have a horizontal line between our various colors. In this case, a one would represent our four color at the top, fading to either white or black at the bottom. Uh, a two would have our four color at the bottom fading upwards. Uh, three has our four, four color on the top and the bottom fading to our, our second color in the middle. And then four is the opposite of that, our four color in the middle fading up and down. Um, if it's a, uh, for instance, an MSO gradient diagonal, you'll be coming, you know, the one through four represents which corner you're coming from. One, I think, is top left. Two is top right. I can't remember which three and four, which is which, which uh, is three and four. So you just have to play with those numbers and see what they represent. I'm going to go with a one here, put our green at the top, and then degree is a number between zero and one. And that controls what color we fade to. With a, with a one color gradient, you don't have control, very much control over your second color that you're fading to. A zero means you're going to fade to full black. A one means you fade to full white. If you give it a decimal in between zero and one, it fades to some measure of gray uh, in between the, uh, the uh, your white and black. So I'm going to put a zero there, so it fades to black. 
And there you go, green at the top, full black at the bottom. Um, so let's give it a decimal here. You can see it fade to something other than a full black. So 0.2, for instance, will give us a, a much lighter, much lighter gray down there. And it very, the, as far as the decimals go, it very quickly fades to a white. You give it a, a 0.5, you don't have um, you don't have any gray or anything down there. We've already gotten rid of the black, and we're headed towards the white side here, so to speak. Uh, give it a 0.8, for instance, and you're getting close to a really light green and then on and close to a white. So that is your one color gradient. Let's get rid of, let's just comment that out rather. Okay, so let's take a look at two color gradient. A two, two color gradient takes two arguments. One again is the, the type of gradient we want. And I'm starting, well, I'm gonna do the uh, gradient from corner this time, it's just something different. And then the variant represents which corner we want to come from. So I'm going to start uh, with our, our four color at uh, the top left. And I've uncommented our four color green here, so we should have green at top left here, fading to white at the bottom. Now here's something fun. Um, okay, I left I've left alone our plot area. You can see that our plot area is over the top of our chart area. But if you want your gradient to show through your plot, your to go through your plot area, what you're going to need to do is plot area format fill visible equals false. All right, make that basically transparent so your four color. I mean, so your gradient, your chart area can show through the plot area. All right. Now we can we can specify what our second color is, and order is important here. You need to have when you want to specify your second color on your two color gradient, you need to make sure that your second color, which is your back color, is after your two color gradient command, all right? Or your two color gradient statement. Now I'm going to make this again a really obviously different color. I'm going to go with the full red here. So red and no green and no blue. You can see it fade from a green to a red. We can also affect the gradient stops where we do our transitions. Now a two-color gradient comes with two gradient stops built in. Gradient stops and gradient stop one, you can specify where that transition occurs. Now zero is the default for gradient stop one. That's, you know, in our case, all the way from top left hand, top left hand corner. Copy this in gradient stop two. The uh, in position one is full on the other all the way across to the other side. So I'm going to run that real fast to show that it still looks the same. Okay. Now we can change where how far out green pushes into the area. So let's do a 0.3 on the green, the first gradient stop. And you can see that we should have a lot more green coming across the graph, okay? Uh, push it even further out. You can see this keeps on going. All right, so that's how you can affect how, how far your numbers go, how far out your color goes. Now, um, two, gradient, two, gradient, two color gradient can also handle more than just two colors. You can add uh, more gradient stops. So gradient stops, use the insert method, and you give it a color. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it full on blue so we can again see it very easily. And it takes also a position. Okay, it's same decimal same decimal position we have up here, if you go to the position here. And we're gonna give it, I'm gonna give this a 0.5, put it right in the middle. Alright. And have a look at should have blue. So we have full on green in the top left turn corner, full on red at the bottom right hand corner, and blue in the middle. We can push, we can push out this green a little bit. Say and push out the blue a little bit further. Oops. There you go. There you 
go. So that's it for colors in the chart area. In the next video, we'll talk about colors in our data series. In our example, we have some uh, bar chart here. We'll talk about filling solid colors in the bars and then using gradients in there as well. Hope you learned something. And uh, as usual, I'll have a link to the code listing in the uh, description down below. Thank you very much.